I'm Ken Sharp, a, a regent in the American College of Surgeons, and I'm here today to interview Dr. John Potts, the Senior Vice President for Surgical Accreditation in the Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education. Uh, the recent COVID pandemic has caused substantial distress in all parts of surgery, but I wanted Dr. Potts to talk to us today about the function of the ACGME, the Residency Review Committees, and how it's impacted them. So John, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, thank you, Ken. It's, uh, it's nice to be here. Just uh, by way of brief self-introduction, I did practice surgery for about 30 years, um, much of that time as a program director and a DIO at the University of Texas, Houston, uh, before coming to the ACGME eight years ago. Uh, as you said, the, AC, the acronym ACGME stands for Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education. And ACGME is the group that accredits uh, all of the uh, surgical residency programs in the United States. I would guess that most fellows haven't thought much about accreditation and certification recently, and uh, it, it might be worth just uh, going over the difference between the two. I'll start with certification. Uh, individuals are, can be certified. Uh, they, in order to be certified, must meet certain standards established by an external certifying group. In this country, pilots must be certified. Barbers can be certified. Some auto mechanics are certified. Certainly the surgeons who are fellows in the American College of Surgery are uh, certified. Uh, mostly uh, by uh, the American Board of Fill-in-the-Blank, American Board of Surgery, or one of the other surgical boards, as opposed to certification, institutions, schools, educational programs are accredited. In order to be accredited, they must meet uh, standards that are established by some external accrediting agency. Colleges and universities are accredited. Uh, U.S. medical schools are accredited either by LCME or by COCA. Surgical residency programs are accredited by the ACGME. Uh, I think that, that most uh, of the fellows will remember something from their residency programs uh, of, their, of their program directors speaking about the RRC. RRC stands for Residency Review Committee. Uh, we no longer actually call them residency review committees because they uh, review both residencies and fellowship programs, so now we just call them review committees. There are 10 surgical review committees for 10 different specialties that we accredit. The composition of those committees is largely surgeons practicing in the field. Each committee also has a resident member, and each committee also has one public member. So my job at the ACGME is to oversee the activities of those 10 surgical review committees. You've obviously had your finger on the pulse of residency training for several years here. Tell us a little bit about what the impact of the pandemic has been on uh, surgical resident training. The impact has been substantial and uh, will be even more substantial next year. Uh, the first thing that happened at the ACGME with respect to accreditation decisions was that uh, all of the site visits that the ACGME had scheduled from mid-March forward have been canceled. The site visits obviously are very important to the accreditation process, putting boots on the ground and really talking to the people who make up the program. The next thing is that the review committee meetings have been switched to a virtual format. We had review committee meetings for all 10 surgical specialties scheduled uh, from the end of March through April. Uh, all the in-person meetings that would have been here in Chicago were canceled and switched to a virtual format. It's not the first time that we've had virtual meetings of the review committees. Uh, we've had those in the past, even before the pandemic. But typically when we had virtual meetings in the past, those were very short agendas uh, that we could deal with over the phone or over another electronic means. Uh, this, was a, this was a new experience for most of the review committee members. I should note that the accreditation decisions that are made in 2020 are almost entirely based on data that was accumulated from programs 
in 2019. So for these review committee meetings, we had full case logs, we had all the graduate certification rates, we had all of the resident surveys, which are very important to the accreditation process. The only thing that was missing were uh, just a very small number of site visits. Now going forward uh, and looking at accreditation decisions that will be made next year, 2021, based on the data that accrues during 2020, the pandemic year, I think uh, there'll be much greater challenge for the review committees in making those decisions. The case logs of the residents will clearly be impacted by the COVID epidemic. Uh, uh, and obviously the, the uh, effect on the case logs of a given resident is sort of inversely proportional to the length of the residency program. Uh, colorectal surgery will have missed as much as one fourth of their training. Uh, whereas a neurosurgery resident will miss a very, very small portion of their seven years of training. But the case logs will be impacted for all specialties. Board certification rates are a very important part of accreditation. As you know, some of the board certification exams have been canceled. Uh, some have been postponed and may or may not be able to occur. I think some of the boards are moving to virtual examination formats. Nevertheless, I think the, the data coming from the, the boards on the certification of graduates of the program uh, will be impacted. The other thing that's impacted for some specialties is the resident survey. I think each of the review committees uh, will really be challenged uh, in 2021 to make appropriate uh, accreditation decisions about programs based on limited data. I expect you're aware of multiple reports from your various residencies about issues with safety protections, personal protective equipment, and probably even uh, illness rates within the various residencies. Ha has that been a major problem uh, that's come to your attention? This is publicly reported, so I, I'm not uh, divulging any confidential information here, but we are aware of one surgical program director who died of the virus. We will uh, accumulate data on the number of residents who were quarantined or hospitalized. At this point, we, know, we do not have those data. Uh, we will get those uh, after July 1st, after the close of this academic year. I will say that, that the safety of the residents has been a primary concern of the ACGME uh, since the pandemic emerged. We published on our website the first week of April, acknowledgement that, that the pandemic would disrupt normal activities within a surgical program, and uh, the, the fact that, that programs may not be able to meet every uh, requirement set forth in the program requirements of the specialty. The three groups of, of requirements for which we said there would be no relaxation were the duty hour requirements, resident safety, uh, in this case, meaning availability of PPE and appropriate training in PPE and other uh, infectious protocols and resident supervision. Those were the three things that we said were inviolate, uh, regardless of uh, the pandemic. I'm certainly aware that there have been a lot of creative solutions to maintaining manpower levels uh, in the face of the crisis and that uh, days on and days off requirements have had to be uh, flexible. Has that been acceptable in your experience? As far as we know, um, at this time, most of the programs that have gone to some kind of a platooning or, or bench team or, or clean team uh, schedule uh, have been able <clears throat> to maintain their duty hours during that time. Uh, because uh, while the residents do work a lot while they're there, uh, they're off a considerable amount of time, uh, at least from clinical activity. I presume that they're continuing to pursue uh, uh, educational activities during that time. We talked the other day about a statement uh, from the ACGME that we'd like to link. So Dr. Potts, would you tell us about the recent statement that the ACGME made over the pandemic? I think the one that you're referring to is one that we wrote specifically speaking to the needs of the surgical programs. In that statement, we acknowledge uh, the difficulties that the programs 
may be going through, uh, particularly in uh, garnering cases for the residents, given that essentially all elective surgery was shut down everywhere, uh, at least for a period of time. It was really a statement regarding the way that the case logs would be looked at going forward by the review committees and acknowledging the fact that the review committees just simply can't hold the, the programs responsible for a pandemic, which is far beyond their control. Surgical education is changing as a result of this pandemic. Face-to-face -face conferences are currently just not being held. Review committee meetings are not being held. Where do you see this impacting residency training as we go forward? I mean, we're seeing many of the major conferences are going virtual. So where do you think the RRC perceives the future over a, you know, let's say a three month and a three year period? As far as the accreditation activities for our organization, one thing that we are currently testing are virtual site visits. Uh, we've always used in-person site visits in the past, and I, can, I presume we will continue to use in-person site visits at least some of the time, but uh, we're really moving toward virtual site visits. I think there'll be more virtual meetings of the review committees as well. Those two moves will save the uh, ACGME a lot of money. And, and that should be good news to the programs because it's their accreditation fees that support the ACGME. So if we can keep the cost of the ACGME down, then we should be able to keep down the accreditation fees that we charge programs. Within programs, uh, as you said, I think there'll be more and more uh, virtual didactic sessions. And those can have advantages. Uh, rather than counting on uh, local talent uh, to, to provide grand rounds, it opens the possibility for national and international experts to provide the lectures for the residents and for the fellows. I also think that some programs may be motivated to move toward a more integrated format of their residencies. And let me just give an example. In orthopedic surgery, it's very common for a resident to have one knee rotation as a junior resident and one knee rotation as a senior resident and those are the only times they ever work on needs. Well, if you happened to be one of those residents who was scheduled to be on a knee rotation the last three months of this year, your operative logs may be very short in knee rotations. It's quite possible that programs may move to a little bit more integrated format for their, for their education such that uh, loss of a three-month period of time in a residency program would not uh, completely remove a resident's experience in that area. At the national level, I think that the pandemic will really force accrediting agencies and certifying agencies to look closely at the curricula that they require. Is every element really, really necessary for, let's say, the practice of surgery in 2020? And I think that's true for the review committee. I think that's also true for the boards. The last thing that I'll mention, I think, is competency-based residency education. Uh, the pandemic has, as we've talked about, has caused residents to miss key rotations, key operative experiences, and maybe even miss their in-training examinations. And this has made and will make it difficult for program directors to make a decision regarding the graduation of a given resident. In the past, most program directors would say, well, this resident has checked all the boxes so they can graduate. Recognizing that we may not be able to check all the boxes because of a pandemic or some other emergency has really motivated uh, a lot of people to move toward a more competency-based as opposed to time-based residency program. The movement toward uh, competency-based education began in the 1990s, but it's really gained momentum very slowly. There's only one surgical residency program in the world that has actually published results of a competency-based uh, curriculum. So we've got a lot of ground to cover to get to a competency-based curriculum uh, in this country, but there certainly is motivation now to move in that direction. I think that's a super point uh, that uh, we're, we, we've got to get away from numbers and uh, time on task and get more to competency as we go forward. So I, um, I appreciate your time in this interview, Dr. Potts. Good luck as we go forwards, and we'll be speaking soon. Well, thank you, Dr. Sharp. It's a pleasure.